Shut up and sit down. Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to be doing some solar astronomy with the setup you can see behind me. The EQ5 Pro mount, the Orion ED80TCF telescope and the Altair Astro GP Cam 3 178C camera. I'm going to be using a 0.5 reducer. Um, it's either going to be set between 0.5 or 0.75 depending on where I uh, install it on the camera, whether I put that on the extension tube or whether I install it straight to the, uh, to the nose of the actual camera body itself. Um, and that will help frame up the sun a bit nicer. At the moment, just as it is, it will frame it up really well, but it will be right on the edge of the, of the frame. And with the wind that you can probably hear today, any kind of movement in the camera, uh, in the telescope, will end up uh, sending the, the sun out of frame. So I just want to reduce or increase the, of, uh, the field of view slightly. Um, to help with any of that kind of movement. I'm planning on doing a sequence of videos uh, which I'll be shooting in the Altair Astro uh, capture software. For some reason every time I try and shoot in the um, SharpCap Pro software it doesn't stack, the videos don't stack at all. Uh, so I'll be shooting in the Altair software which always seems to work pretty well. Um, I plan on doing yeah, a sequence of videos, so say five minutes each, short break, another five minutes, short break, and so on. Um, do that for a couple of hours, hopefully. Um, I want to try and get a sunspot moving across the, the face of the sun. Um, I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, to photograph the sun, you'll need a solar filter. I adapted this one myself, believe it or not. Um, I'll put a large piece of card around the outside of it to protect the rest of the scope and the gears, the guide scope and everything from the sun to stop it from kind of getting too hot and also an old pillowcase which goes around the rest of the scope again just to stop it from getting too hot. Um, this was from the 200p, it's a filter to fit that. As you can see I've just made a little adapter there that fits over my scope nicely. Um, do be careful if you're doing anything like this because um, if you damage the filter or if it's not fitting properly and blows off then you can really do some damage to yourself or the equipment that you're using if it's just exposed directly to the sunlight so make sure you're careful if you do make a masterpiece like this yourself okay so as you can see the rig is all set up so I'll attach my solar filter uh, program all the time and the date and everything into the mount so that it knows where the sun should be and hopefully because it's all aligned and set up from last night it should just be a case of um, selecting the sun go to and we should be pretty much there so I'll uh, nip over to that and join you in a second Okay, so now we're pointing at the sun, or hopefully somewhere near it. I'll just go on to, uh, onto the Altair software and see if we've actually got anything on there. Right, okay, so now we'll go into the Altair software. See, we've got the camera here, so we'll connect that. Now we just need to play around with the gain and the exposure just to See what we've got and you can see that we're nowhere near it. So 
So what I might do is go into the APT software. Now you can just control this using your hand controller, which depending on how we get on with this, I might just use that, but essentially we can tweak the position using this. We won't be able to use any kind of plate solving software. Obviously there's no stars that are going to be visible at this time of the day. So instead, we'll just use the ASCOM controllers that will pop up when this loads, hopefully. Right, okay, so now we've got the system here. We can go to, say, like that. Just increase the gain. Hmm. What's happened? Doesn't seem to be doing anything. Right, let's close that and try again. Oh, I know. Because this has come along and robbed the camera. So disconnect that. Close that. Uh, and go back into the Alter Capture software. And hopefully that's released this camera so we can use it again. There we go. Oh, we're probably actually not too far off, maybe. Probably just... Gosh, probably hear that wind. I've got a feeling that we could actually be looking at the sun here. It's getting brighter. So, gosh, trying to get blown off the edge of it. Now we'll go back over to the scope and see if we can get focused. If I can find any of the twiddly bits under it. There we go. Right, so hopefully you're not too far off. So as we wind the focus in, all right, should hopefully see this kind of fuzzy patch getting bigger or smaller. Just not at the moment. All right, as it will go, let's see if we can. Okay. So now we'll probably have to do is just drop the exposure down a lot, a bit more, not that much, kind of just gives us some idea of what direction the sun will be in. It would be quite handy for you guys to use a solar finder, what the heck is that? Uh -huh. Not that low. Dash can it. Okay, so get it somewhere where I'm not getting all the glare around the outside of it. Something like that, and then we'll try and focus in on that, as you can see. That's getting better, getting better, better, better. 
Keep winding it in. Getting pretty close there. Just got a bit of focus there. And see that there is pretty good. So now what we'll do is we can decrease the exposure a bit. higher than that, I'll probably do, and then zoom in, to there, so say go 150% maybe, and then this is going to be really tricky, because I can barely see a thing, because of the glare, but we'll just try and get, yeah, Nice crisp edge. See the kind of disturbance that the wind is causing. Now, I'm not seeing any kind of details on here at the moment. So let's just try zooming back out and center up a bit better but I don't think there's any sunspots which is typical. Bump the sun up a bit there. Let's try and get the screen brightness up a bit more. Whack this right up. Screen brightness, skidoosh. Okay, so I don't know whether that's just noise from the camera because we are at 23 degrees whether this is detail on the sun. So what I might do is just go over to the edges, just try and get that as crisp as I can. And that way, looks like it's getting more fuzzy. And this way, getting better. Okay, I think that's probably about as good as it's going to get. So, what we do now is just... Is that actually centred? Oh no, that's centred. Can I see? So just put that back over here. Come down a bit. Whoa. That should do it. Hmm. So then we can go to capture. Well, oh, first of all, change that to the sun. Light frames. Oh, it's gone too high. So we'll, what I normally do then is just to go to auto white balance, also auto histogram. So just leave that on default. Region of interest, we're not going to set that. 
and leave that as it is. White balance. See what it does. There you go. It's kind of giving us a bit of a better white balance there. I think. Just try it on that. White balance. Oh my god. Capture here. This is where SharpCut Pro is a lot, lot better. In my opinion, it is. Just the, the settings and everything just seem to be a lot more user-friendly. Like you sh in the Altair Capture stuff, you should really just be able to, to click in there and go. But you can't. of the day. Don't need that. Connect your camera. It's that one. Woo -woo. And what we'll do is gain or stay at its minimum, which is a hundred. Drop the exposure right then in. So we're not. There, and I think we can kind of see some of the granule kind of effects. That seems pretty good to be fair. Uh, capture, start capture. Then we're going to go for a number of frames. Let's do a thousand frames at a time. Form sequence capture, sequence length. Do you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to bump this up to 2000. And we're just going to, we're going to skip the whole sequence thing. There's no sunspot so it's kind of pointless trying to do that. Okay, let's wait for this wind to drop. We'll go for it there. Oh my god. that didn't actually jiggle around or anything then. So frames at the moment, we're on 67. This is only the uh, USB 2. I don't have a, a laptop with USB 3, so the frame rate is pretty slow. Uh, if you've got the full frame like I'm using at the moment, you can go and set this to region of interest, which if it was still, I'd crop this right around the sun. Um, and you can do that on this one by uh, capture area, by reducing that size and then framing it up around it. Um, but as it's so windy and it's jiggling the scope around so much, I'm just going to leave this as it is, uh, full frame. And let it do its thing. It's going pretty quick actually. It's quicker than it normally does with, uh, with the planets and stuff, which I'm surprised about. Um, Little dog, he's got something to say today, isn't he? Ah, he wants to get let back in. He's been shut outside, I think. And he's not happy. I 
Right, so I'll, um, I'll speed this up through this process, just so you're not just watching 2,000 frames being taken. Uh, but at the end of it, obviously it'll come up with a note to say that your file has been saved, and then you can, uh, then I'll close that and I'll go and capture the same thing on the Altair um, program as well, because uh, as I say, this I seem to have a lot of problems with with uh, with stacking uh, videos from SharpCap Pro. For some reason, it just never does it. Just whenever you set to a line. Uh, and limit, whenever you go to limit, it just goes right off the page and it only really stacks, like it stacks like one image and then obviously you can't do anything with that. So I don't know whether, if anyone knows why that might be, please do leave a comment because I'd be interested to find out what I'm doing wrong, whether I've got any of these settings uh, are incorrect and should be should be something else, I don't know. But if you know, please leave a comment. Okay. Right, so that obviously would have taken that right out of the shot. And look at the state of that now. Jesus Christ. See, this is where having a, a USB 3 would be really handy. It probably would have completed the whole sequence by now. And then you know, would have missed that little gust of wind. But I don't know. Hopefully, like, I think probably more than 50% of these shots should be pretty good. So if I use 50% of the best frames, hopefully that jiggling around it just did then, hopefully that will just discard all those frames and just stick with like these ones, which seem pretty good. We'll see. Okay, so now that one is done, we can now we'll now close SharpCut Pro and we'll go back into the Altair Astro software, Altair Capture, connect the camera we're using, good god, right so we'll just zoom in on that. We'll just see if we can just tweak the settings slightly. I'm not really seeing much on there, if I'm honest. It's I can't really tell. Well, so we can, uh, it's not ideal. At the moment, if, if there was a sunspot, you can focus in on that quite well. Uh, obviously, this is just using a, a kind of basic uh, solar filter. You can get the proper uh, the Daystar quark things, which open up a whole new layer of the sun. It's not just, uh, at the moment here, we're looking at, at just like the, the visible layer, if you use one of the quarks you can uh, it opens up a whole new wavelength of light which you'll be able to photograph and you get some really nice details you get all the prominences around the uh, around the outside of the sun you get all the flares and things like that so if you're going to do solar that's really what you want but they are really expensive and 
for me, I don't know, we don't get many days like this in the UK. So solar astronomy is not really something that I'm going to be getting into too much. But still, I think those settings are pretty good. I'll leave it at that. So you can go to capture. Uh, no, actually, I don't do that. I then just go to record. And then you watch down here for the frames. You see 7, 10. It's going to about 3 frames a second, which is pretty poor. But it's as good as we can get it. It's still wobbling around quite a lot. But we'll let it do its thing. And again, if we just use the best 50% or so, it might have something decent at the end of it. But we'll see. Okay, I'll let it do its thing and I'll be back shortly. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there for today. Uh, I'm not overly confident that this homemade contraption is actually going to stay on the scope with this wind. And it's just sending the, the, uh, the scope all over the place. So I think I'm just going to park the scope and just go and see what I've got so far. I'm going to uh, give imaging a go again today. I'll say last night I, I did try and I couldn't get over 30 seconds, but it is quite a good opportunity to, uh, to have a go at just finding a load of targets in the sky and just have a go at framing them up, um, see how you get. I've been doing a few 30 second uh, exposures for an hour or so. Um, normally that then gives you about half an hour's worth of data just because most of them are, are shaking and, and trailing because of the wind. Um, but as you say, it gives you an idea of what you can shoot and how it's going to look um, roughly uh, for those nights where the conditions are actually a bit better. So it's it's still worth getting the gear out and uh, and shooting something, but I don't think there's going to be any anything decent for the next couple of days, unfortunately. So thank you for watching, guys. I know this is a bit of a short video and probably not one that's uh, turned out that great, but thank you for watching anyway and clear skies.